Today we're going to share with you how to breed ball pythons in five simple steps. To start off, your ball python needs to be the right age, weight and the general condition of the snake needs to be in good condition. So for males, generally males can start from a year old or two years old and between the weight ranges of 700 grams and 1200 grams. In my opinion, the most optimal would be to start pairing your male at two years of age and around at 900 to 1000 grams to start pairing with your males. Some males can start a bit earlier, but I don't advise this. I'd always say make sure that you've got a good mature male, especially when pairing him with multiple females. With females, some females reach sexual matur maturity a bit quicker, but the optimal time is to pair them at three years of age, but some females can actually reach it at two years. But I would always say start at three years because then you know the females went through all of the winters and she's got enough age and also size to her. So the right way to start pairing ball python females is between 1,500 grams at the minimum and uh, between 1,500 grams and 2,000 grams but with 1,500 being the minimum to start pairing them up. Step number two is creating the optimal climate. So with the ball pythons we need to stimulate follicle growth in females and also with the males they need some sort of cool down in order for them to realize listen we're actually in the middle of breeding season so with our South African season because our winters and summer are completely opposite to the most of the other breeders worldwide we actually start pairing our ball pythons in the beginning of May so what we do is we keep year round our hot spots at 31 degrees Celsius year round and what we do is we actually manipulate our ambient temperature so in non-breeding times which will be between september and the end of march we keep our room temperature or, or our ambient temperature at 20 degrees celsius throughout the day and throughout those time uh, time of the year the start of april we actually drop our temperature from 28 degrees celsius to 26 degrees celsius for the month of April and then from the month of May to the towards the month end of September we actually run our temperatures at 24 degrees Celsius. This gives our males and our females a big enough decrease in temperatures that they know listen we're actually in breeding season now and we can start building that follicles and then you see the females normally go through different behaviors where they move a bit closer to the water ball or to the cooler side and that's normally a good indication that you're on the right steps. So this is the method that we use to manipulate our temperatures in our breeding room but some other people manipulate their hot spots and they keep the ambient temperatures at a constant temperature. So if that's the route you want to follow, you can always adjust your hot spots. Whatever works the best for you, you can go for. Now let's talk about introducing your snakes. So I always say a female needs to get a copulation at least once a month with the desired male that she's being paired up to. So for instance, if you have a couple of, uh, male, of females for a certain male, it's good to have him at least once per month with the female. Younger females sometimes tend to actually need more copulations than older females. Proven breeder females sometimes only need one or two locks actually to start the growth of follicle development. It all depends on the female herself and how she is developing follicles. If you have a case where a male, let's say, doesn't want to pair with a female, I always say it's good to actually put the male, if you have multiple females, with a few females just to get him going. So let's say, for instance, you put the male in with a female, but he doesn't seem like he wants to breed with that exact female. You can maybe switch him out to the next female until he actually starts breeding. Sometimes that just helps the males to get into rotation, especially younger males. This is also the time where you check your females. If they start feeding heavily, then you know you're also on the right track. We like to introduce our males to our females in the beginning or in the middle of May. It just depends on when we started to cool the animals and how far we are in the cooling process. Step number four is in-depth observation. This is the time we closely need to monitor your females and make sure what they were doing the previous time and see how they're reacting the following if you check up again on, on them. 
This is the time where the females will firmer regulate, where the female will actually move between the hot and the cold spot, depending on where they are with their follicle development. As females are closer to ovulation, they'll actually stop feeding and spend a lot of time on the cooler side. And just right after ovulation, this is the time where they're actually starting to nest and will start moving to the warmer side of the cage and normally start laying in a coil position. So I always say it's very important to know what your snakes did the previous time that you checked on them. So always make sure to observe your snakes in breeding season. Now this is the time where you can start expecting eggs. So normally between 14 and 21 days after your female has ovulated, she'll go through a pre-ovulation shed and normally 30 days after having this shed, you can expect eggs. So some of the characteristics that I've seen on the female ball pythons, especially closer to laying eggs, they, the spinal cord of the female looks like it's actually starting to be very predominant and the female looks extremely big. It looks like she's been, you know, had a couple of large meals and this is normally a good indication. If your female goes through a prelay shed and she's actually spending a lot of time on the cold side, then it's actually not good at all. I've had a few cases in the past after the female has had a prelay shed where the female actually doesn't spend a lot of time on the heat and they actually move front in the front of the tub. And from my past experience, honestly, you don't, this is a time where you're not gonna have a 100% healthy clutch. Sometimes you can have a healthy clutch, but normally if the female moves to the front of the tub after pre-lay sheds, then it means that she might have an infertile clutch. In the future, make sure to stay tuned to our YouTube channel. In this next breeding season, we'll make sure to take you guys along the journey from the female laying a clutch of eggs, going right through the incubational time period, and also showing you guys the hatchlings once they're hatched out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.